gospel lesson for this fourth week of Epiphany is from the fifth chapter of the Gospel of Matthew, beginning at the first verse. When Jesus saw his ministry drawing huge crowds, he climbed the hillside. Those who were apprentices to him, the committed, climbed with him. Arriving at a quiet place, he sat down and taught his climbing companions. This is what he said. You're blessed when you're at the end of your rope. With less of you, there is more of God in his rule. You're blessed when you feel you've lost what is most dear to you. Only then can you be embraced by the one most dear to you. You're blessed when you're content with just who you are. No more, no less. That's the moment you find yourselves proud owners of everything that can't be bought. You're blessed when you've worked up a good appetite for God. He's food and drink and the best meal you'll ever eat. You're blessed when you care. At the moment of being careful, you find yourselves cared for. You're blessed when you get your inside world, your mind, and heart put right. Then you can see God in the outside world. You're blessed when you can show people how to cooperate instead of compete or fight. That's when you discover who you really are and your place in God's family. You're blessed when your commitment to God provokes persecution. The persecution drives you even deeper into God's kingdom. Not only that, count yourselves blessed every time people put you down or throw you out or speak lies about you to discredit me. What it means is that the truth is too close for comfort and they are uncomfortable. You can be glad when that happens. Give a cheer, even. For though they don't like it, I do. And all of heaven applauds. And know that you are in good company. My prophets and witnesses have always gotten into this kind of trouble. If 
they went out somewhere. I was the one who had to do all kinds of things that my little brothers never had to do. When I got my driver's license, who do you think had to go to the store when the milk or bread had run out? It wasn't my mom, it wasn't my dad, certainly wasn't those little consumers of life that were there with us, <laughs> it was me. So none of the privilege that I had was anything akin to a privilege at all. Have you ever noticed in different cultures, people understand things differently? We, we see things differently. There are some cultures, for example, in which it is a wonderful privilege to have many, many children. If you have many children, you are considered to be blessed beyond measure. A family with eight or nine or ten or even twelve children is considered to be a rich family indeed. And for those people in that culture, <coughs> if you have only one child or perhaps none at all, they are pitied. Oh, you poor thing. Now, on the other hand, there are cultures in which if you tell someone, oh, I've got 12 children, the response is, oh, you poor thing. <laughs> <laughs> Our perceptions are different, and it, it happens in all kinds of different ways. There are cultures, for example, in which the shade of your skin, the color of your skin makes a difference. If you are very, very, very dark, you're considered to be unlucky or without privilege. Those who are lighter complected are the ones who are lucky. Unless, of course, you live in North America, in which case you pay an enormous amount of money to get yourself darker by going into suntan studios. <laughs> Every culture has things flip-flopped, things different. We don't understand precisely what it is that we understand by privilege. Now, I want you to think about the text that Logan read for us. This is the message version, Eugene Peterson's paraphrase, of the text that we call the Beatitudes, where Jesus says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are those who are poor from Luke, and so forth. We have those, those themes that we hear in this version, but stated differently. And I want you to pay attention, because we have a tendency to glorify that language. We have a tendency to think of those things as really nice without paying attention to what it is that they mean. Listen, for example, to the first one. You're blessed when you're at the end of your rope. With less of you, there's more room or more of God in his rope. You're blessed when you're at the end of your rope. Now think about that for a second. To be at the end of one's rope usually describes a feeling of being overwhelmed, being fearful, anxious, uptight. Whatever you want to use to describe it, being at the end of one's rope is not something that we would usually associate with being blessed. And yet, Jesus says here, you're blessed when you're at the end of your rope. The next one. You're blessed when you feel you've lost what is most dear to you. Only then can you be embraced by the one most dear to you. You're blessed when you mourn. When someone who is close to you who has, has died, and you are grieving, and you are mourning, one scarcely feels blessed at that time. You feel empty. But Jesus here says, no. Brothers and sisters, you are blessed. It makes little sense to us. It confuses us. You're blessed and you're content with just who you are, no more, no less. That's the moment you find yourselves proud owners of everything that can be on. You're blessed, and it goes, there's a whole bunch of these that go on in different ways. Uh, you're blessed when your commitment to God provokes persecution. Persecution drives you even deeper into God's kingdom. Now, how many people here have ever felt privileged or blessed when you're persecuted? Normally, that doesn't feel particularly good. Brothers and sisters, here's the thing. Jesus' way of looking at things, and ours, is clearly very different. The people who are privileged in a way that we understand privilege don't understand sometimes what it is that Jesus is saying. We choose to interpret it in our, 
to interpret it in our own way. For example, we think that privilege means wealth. We think that privilege, or blessing, refers to abundance. We think that privilege and blessing refers to having everything material that you could possibly want. In this regard, we certainly, in America, are blessed. Very few of us have anything to complain about. And even those of us who do complain, it's a little bit specious in the end. But Jesus says to us, those people who are mourning, those people who are poor in spirit, and indeed the Lucan version says, the poor, blessed are the poor. That means people who don't have enough are blessed. <coughs> and that sometimes just doesn't make sense to us. Because we feel for them pity. Song. But Jesus says there are blessed. Well, what are we to do with this? First of all, understand something. <coughs> that Jesus comes to those who are facing challenges in this life. Think of it. This is consistent with the biblical record from the beginning. The prophet Samuel. We just read this Old Testament lesson last week. When he's a little boy. And in Hebrew culture, a little boy had no significance at all. He was just a servant. And yet he was the one that God was called. Mary, the mother of Jesus, a young man, she was, frankly, insignificant. Just a girl. And as you know, in that culture, girls had less value, were perceived to have less value than the boys. And yet, she was the one whom God chose to be the mother of our Savior. King David, a shepherd boy. There's no lower occupation that he could have had, and he was but a child himself. And he became the greatest of the kings of Israel. All of these are indications that God comes to those who are facing challenges. God comes to those who are and so, brothers and sisters, it's challenging for us because it doesn't sound like we're blessed, or at least that our definition of blessing makes any sense. But it does help us to know this, because for each of us, for all of us, there are moments and there are times when we grieve. There are moments and there are times when we feel poor in spirit, discouraged and frustrated and anxious. There are times when we feel lost. There are times despite our stuff, despite our wealth, despite everything that we have, there are times when we feel downright alone. Now, we can relate as can those who grieve and mourn, etc., etc., that Jesus is with us. But you and I have a role. Because in this world where so many people are mourning, are feeling alone, are suffering, are poor in spirit, and have nothing to eat, you and I have a role to play because as people who are blessed, we need to share. As people who are blessed, we need to come close to those to whom Jesus has appeared, to whom Jesus has come, and to be with them. Because in their sorrow, they might not remember. In their difficulty, they might not recall who it is that's with them. What it is that's been done for them. And so to be close to them and to remind them, hey, I know you're having a bad time right now, but you're not alone. Jesus is with you. To sit beside someone whose circumstances are so challenging that they feel isolated and afraid. To remind them that Jesus is there for them. Brothers and sisters, even though there is a sense in which our blessing is not the blessing that we think of, but a blessing that's totally different because Jesus comes to the lowly, Jesus comes to those who are suffering, even though that is an understanding that sometimes is far from us, we can at the very least reach out to God's people who are suffering and to remind them, God is with you. And in that act, and in that moment, God is using you as his tool. So go up 
love from this place. And wherever you see the Lord, those who are mourning, those who are suffering, those who feel like they've lost everything, those who are alone and isolated, <coughs> befriend them and remind them that God is indeed with them. For in so doing, you become the hands and the feet of God in the world. Brothers and sisters, the world needs to know this because we live in a world of terrible fear and desperation, and it's getting worse every day. Share the news that Jesus is with us. Everyone needs to hear. Even us. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. <laughs> Good and gracious Lord, we give you thanks this day that you've chosen to be with us, those of us who are lowly, poor in spirit, poor in wealth, those of us who mourn and suffer. Grant us grace so that we might know your presence. And grant us friends who might remind us that you are with us. And when we are feeling well and encounter someone who is suffering, encourage us to remind them that God is with them. Help us, Lord, to know that you're present in all circumstances. And help us to share that news with the world that needs to hear it. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen.